Court-appointed special advocates, or CASA, has helped over a quarter million children around the U.S. Connecticut CASA has also recently expanded its operations. I'm Nathan O'Leary for Comcast Newsmakers. Joining me is Connecticut CASA's Executive Director, Josiah Brown. Josiah, welcome to the show. Thank you. Good to be here. If we could start first by explaining to people what the work of CASA is. Sure. So we're part of this national network, as you say, court appointed special advocates appointed by judges to identify and advance the best interests of children. And in Connecticut, these are cases involving both foster care and what's known as protective supervision, which is a prior stage when the hope is that children can remain with their families. And these volunteers uh, get to know the children. Uh, through regular visits. They work with the lawyers, the social workers, and other professionals such as educators and health uh, professionals, and uh, can periodically make recommendations to the judge about what is in the, the child's best interest. The hope is that every child can find a safe, permanent home as quickly as possible. As I mentioned, you recently in Connecticut merged a couple offices. Mm -hmm. How is that going to help you overall to grow in the state? Yeah, thank you. So um, it, it will make us more efficient, add to our visibility around Connecticut. We now have a board that's twice the size it was originally. So we're up to 18 colleagues spanning the state. And uh, we recently announced an expansion, not only working in the New Haven court, but also the Waterbury court. And those are the two largest for child protection in Connecticut together, comprising about 30% of the children under the, the, the juvenile uh, courts, uh, child protection side statewide. I understand that this number is really surprising to me. It's a wonderful number. 100,000 CASA volunteers nationwide. That must have been an incredible effort to gather those people, recruit those people, and train those people. How do you continue this job? Yeah, so on an annual basis, there are uh, almost 100,000 volunteers around the country serving close to 300,000 children. Uh, it was a bit down during the pandemic, uh, as many things were, but uh, it really is uh, inspiring to be part of this national network. We've received uh, recognition from, for example, Nicholas Kristof in the New York Times, then his colleague, Jane Koston, uh, most recently around the holidays. So um, I think that mobilizes people. They uh, want to find ways to contribute to their communities to mm -hmm. serve children. And these are among our most vulnerable children. These are kids who've experienced abuse or neglect. And this is a proven way to uh, help I identify the safe permanent homes for them, advance their economic and mental health and educational prospects. And, um, you know, we're, we're an efficient model as well. So the, the idea is that there are uh, 30 volunteers supported by each staff person, and those 30 volunteers on average serve around 75 children. So uh, it is, you know, it's no substitute for the work that the professionals do, but they have heavy caseloads, the attorneys, right. the social workers, and educators. Uh, so this is uh, an important way to, to complement their work uh, and to be part of the team advancing children's and, and families' prospects. You mentioned before permanency. What exactly is the risk if these kids don't get to that sense of permanency in their teen years? Well, there are many risks associated with prolonged time in the foster system. Those who age out, as uh, the term says, children in foster care are only about uh, only about half of them graduate high school. Only about three percent will end up graduating college. There are increased uh, risks associated with mental health crises, homelessness, uh, and other concerns, including involvement in the juvenile justice system. So this is a preventative approach, working with our partners uh, who are professionals and allowing the volunteers to form relationships. Uh, and that's certainly important to cultivating resilience, the strong relationship with at least one adult and our caring, consistent advocates provide that along with uh, rallying resources and informing the judge periodically of what they believe is in the child's best interest. This is a proven model with results around the country. So children with CASA volunteers uh, are 25%, they spend on average 25% less time in the foster care system 
and they're only half as likely to return to the child welfare system uh, once they uh, their case is closed. So uh, that's the kind of uh, proven record that uh, we trust people will continue to invest in and, and volunteers will continue to seek out this opportunity. Proof in the numbers there. Well, Josiah Brown, thank you very much for coming on and telling us about Connecticut CASA. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity and thank you to our volunteers. And thank you for joining us here for Comcast Newsmakers. You can always head on over to comcastnewsmakers.com for more. Until next time, I'm Nathan O'Leary.